Praise the Lord, everyone, and welcome to the New Covenant Apostolic Church of Holly, Michigan. Our topic today, the subject is, Has the Gospel Been Preached in All the World and to All Nations? It's being said today by many preachers that the one main thing delaying the return of the Lord Jesus is that this Gospel must be preached to all nations. This being said, they then make an emotional appeal to send your money so that this last event can be fulfilled, thus ushering in the return of Jesus. The main scripture that is used to justify this position is found in the book of Matthew, chapter 24, and verse 14. This is what the scripture said. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. A closer look at the context of this verse, the Greek words used, and the political environment of the audience to whom Jesus was speaking will help us get a clear understanding of its true meaning. The scripture in Matthew chapter 24 verse 14, the word world is translated from the Greek word okumene. We just taught a lesson on the YouTube channel entitled A New World View a few weeks ago which discussed the meaning of okumene. Okumene means the inhabited earth or the inhabitants of the earth. During the New Testament times, okumene very often referred to the Roman Empire and all of its subjects who lived within it. The Roman Empire was clearly the predominant power during the New Testament times. During the earthly ministry of Jesus, the population of the city of Rome was one million people. The population of the entire Roman Empire at this time was approaching 100 million people across 50 different nations. The majority of the Roman Empire was made up of Gentile nations. We can see by observing the context of several verses where okumene is used that it clearly is referring to the Roman Empire. Let's look at Luke chapter 2 and verse 1. And it came to pass in those days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. Here we read about a decree that went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world, Okumene, should be taxed. The Roman Emperor Caesar Augustus was taxing the inhabitants of the Roman Empire, Okumene. Another example of this same context is found in the book of Acts chapter 11 and verse 28. And there stood up one of them named Agabus and signified by the Spirit that there should be great dearth throughout all the world, which came to pass in the days of Claudius Caesar. In this verse, Agabus warned them of a coming dearth or famine throughout all the world, Okumine. History tells us of a couple of different famines that occurred in the Roman Empire. One was in A.D. 41-42, and the other was in A.D. 45, and was centered in Judea. In Acts chapter 11, verse 29 and 30, we read about relief being sent to the brethren in Judea because of this famine. Then the disciples, every man according to his ability, determined to send relief unto the brethren which dwelt in Judea, which also they did, and sent it to the elders by the hands of Barnabas and Saul. In the book of Acts, chapter 24, verse 5, we read about the accusations against the Apostle Paul. They accused him of being a mover of sedition 
among all the Jews throughout the world. Okumine. Paul was going through the Roman Empire with the gospel of Jesus Christ. For we have found this man, a pestilent fellow, and a mover of sedition among all the Jews throughout the world, and a ringleader of the sect of the Nazarenes. It was hard enough for Paul to traverse the vast Roman Empire. He certainly didn't have the wherewithal to travel to North America or beyond. In Acts chapter 17 and verse 6, the scripture said this, And when they found them not, they drew Jason and certain brethren unto the rulers of the city, crying, These that have turned the world upside down are come hither also. In this scripture we read about the disciples who were turning their world, Okumine, upside down with the gospel message. Clearly, we can see from the context that the meaning of the word world, Okumine, is referring to the Roman Empire. There was hardly a province of the Roman Empire in which the gospel of Jesus Christ had not been preached. During that 40 year period from the ascension of Jesus until AD 70, the disciples went throughout the Roman Empire teaching and preaching this great gospel message. The disciples were obeying the commandment that Jesus gave to them. Go ye therefore and teach all nations. Matthew chapter 28, 19 and 20, this is what the scripture said. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I've commanded you. And lo, I'm with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. Remember the Roman Empire was made up of many different nations and races. He told them to go starting in Jerusalem, to all Judea, to Samaria, and unto the uttermost part of the earth. Acts chapter 1 verse 8 said this, but ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And ye shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth. The Bible tells us that Paul himself carried the gospel message to Arabia, Syria, Asia Minor, Greece, Alicrium, Rome, Spain and many other places. Romans chapter 15 verse 19, 24 and 28. The book of Galatians chapter 1 verse 17. Philippians chapter 1 verse 13. Acts chapter 13 verses 4 and 5. Acts chapter 15 verse 41. Acts chapter 16 verse 6 and 9. All of these scriptures, they prove the fact that the apostles went into all of the then known world. The gospel was offered everywhere, but not received everywhere. Before the destruction of Jerusalem, the Bible tells us that the gospel had been carried into all parts of the known world. Romans chapter 10, verse 18, the scripture said this, But I say, have they not heard? Yes. Verily their sound went into all the earth, and their words unto the ends of the world. Did you catch what that scripture said? It said that their sound went into all the earth, and their words unto the ends of the world. Okumine. Paul boldly proclaims that the gospel was preached to every creature under heaven. Colossians chapter 1 verse 23, the scripture said this, If ye continue in the faith grounded and settled, and be not moved away from the hope of the gospel, which ye have heard, and which was preached to every creature which is under heaven, whereof I, Paul, am made a minister. This obviously is referring to their known world, 
the predominant political power of their day, the Roman Empire. The scriptures themselves tell us what Jesus stated in Matthew chapter 24 and verse 14. And the gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. The gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world, okumine, for a witness unto all nations, the Roman Empire, and then shall the end come. By saying this, Jesus stated this had already come to pass before Jerusalem fell in A.D. 70. The end that was rapidly approaching them was the end of God's covenant relationship with the nation of Israel. It was not the end of time. Nowhere in the Bible does it ever say anything about the end of time. It was the old covenant that was getting ready to end. Notice Hebrews chapter 8 verse 13. In that he saith a new covenant, he hath made the first old. Now that which decayeth and waxeth old is ready to vanish away. Jesus said it himself in Matthew chapter 24 and verse 34, that the generation he was addressing would not pass away until Matthew chapter 24 and verse 14 was fulfilled. Paul and the rest of the apostles, they fulfilled this prophecy of Jesus in Matthew chapter 24 and verse 14. This is what the scripture said. Verily I say unto you, this generation shall not pass till all these things be fulfilled. They truly did go into all their known world, Okumine, with the gospel of Jesus Christ. In conclusion, using Matthew chapter 24 and verse 14 as a vehicle to extract money out of your wallet to send the gospel throughout the world so that Jesus will be able to come back again is a deception and a money-making scheme used by preachers today. In Matthew chapter 24 and verse 14, in its proper context, this already was fulfilled. No doubt we still have a commission today to go everywhere preaching and teaching this beautiful gospel message of Jesus Christ that the apostles taught, but not to produce the second coming of Jesus. Jesus and his kingdom are here right now, right now with us. We can be born into it or dwell outside of it. Revelation chapter 22, verse 14 and 15, the scripture said this, Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have right to the tree of life and may enter in through the gates into the city. For without are dogs and sorcerers and whoremongers and murderers and idolaters and whosoever loveth and maketh a lie. What that scripture was saying is that outside of the church of Jesus Christ, all of these things that are evil they exist. They, they're there. The gospel that Jesus gave to the apostles is still being preached today and will continue to be preached throughout eternity because there is no end to the new covenant. It is everlasting. Notice Jeremiah 32 and verse 40. And I will make an everlasting covenant with them that I will not turn away from them to do them good but I will put my fear in their hearts that they shall not depart from me. We today are not facing any end, any future end. There is still an urgency, though, to reach our world, our Okumine, our entire planet, with this beautiful gospel message of Jesus Christ because life is short and eternity is forever. In our modern times, we have the wherewithal to accomplish this mission. 
every new generation that is born on this earth, they need to hear the truth of God's Word. They need to hear how to get forever in their lives. Many are going, but are they taking the true gospel message that can bring only salvation? Jesus told us that we must be born again. John chapter 3, verse 3, 5, and 7, the Bible said this, Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. Marvel not that I say unto thee, Ye must be born again. Jesus is the one that said this, You must be born again. This can only come through obedience to the gospel message of Jesus Christ. In Acts chapter 2, verse 37 to 39, this is what the Bible said. Now when they heard this, they were pricked in their heart and said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles, Men and brethren, what shall we do? Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. For the promise is unto you and to your children, and to all that are far off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. This is the gospel message of Jesus Christ. It is everlasting. It is eternal. How shall they hear unless we tell them? This is our purpose today. This is our destiny. This concludes our subject today. Has the gospel been preached in all the world and to all nations? If you have a question or a comment, you can email us at the New Covenant Apostolic Church at gmail.com or you can call us at 248-459-2130. If you've enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a like. If you enjoyed the, co the content of our channel, make sure to subscribe by hitting the bell icon for notification when we upload new videos. Thank you, and God bless you. I've been crucified with Christ. I've